Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back for another video. Now in today's video, I'm going to show you how I add some steps off of this deck here that'll land on this cement pad. Now I just recently poured this cement pad and I put a video out on that. So if you're interested in how to pour something like this, then I'll leave that video link below so you can go and check that out. But like I said, today's video is going to be all about adding some steps off of this deck here. So let me show you how I did it. Hey guys, it's summertime finally, and that means that we're about to spend a lot of time outside. So given that, I knew I wanted to tackle a project on this deck, and that project being adding a set of steps off of this side of the deck here. Now we do have a set of steps on the opposite side of the deck, however that leads to a portion of the yard that we don't really use quite as much. This side here is something that we use, uh, this side of the yard is something that we use a lot more, and anytime we want to come over here we have to walk down that side of the deck walk around over to here and to be honest it's not that far and I know saying I need steps even closer makes me sound incredibly lazy however like I said this is just a much nicer portion of the yard it's much flatter it's where our fire pit is it's where this little guy likes to fetch daily so uh, like I said just considering how much we use this portion of the yard I think adding a set of steps off the deck on this side is just gonna make it function better for us now as you can see this is wide open right now because I have already gone ahead and demoed the railing for this side of the deck um, and I have to apologize because I did try to film that for some reason though my camera just decided to stop recording uh, so I don't have the footage uh, of that demo but I think you guys get the idea all I did was take that railing down and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some measurements for the steps on the opposite side because I want to basically mimic uh, those steps on this side. I want them to look the same and I want them to be in the same location just for symmetry sake. So I'm gonna take the measurements over there so that can uh, sort of tell me over here where I need my post to go, where the opening for the steps is gonna go. And then once I have all that figured out, I can go ahead and cut those railings that I demoed already down to size and work on getting that attached back to the deck. All right, let's get going. To get started, I worked on transferring those measurements from the other side of the deck to help me figure out where my 6x6 six six posts would need to sit. And in the process, I accidentally smacked my buddy right in the face with the tape measure, which meant I had a lot of apologizing to do. Thankfully, he's quick to forgive, and I got back to work laying out my posts. Now the side of the deck that I demoed only had one of these 6x6 posts so in order to match the other side I had to buy a 6x6 and cut it to size to match my existing one. And I will say that cutting through a 6x6 takes some work. I started with my little battery powered circular saw, cutting through one side, then flipping the piece over and cutting through each side like that. Then I had to bring in my bigger corded circular saw to cut down a little deeper and finally I had to cut all the way through with my reciprocating saw. Once I had my post cut to size, I got it up on the deck and started laying out where I wanted my opening for the stairs. my post set in place, I started working on cutting my railings down to size and getting them reattached to the deck. Once I had my railings cut to their new size, I worked on getting the 6x6 post attached to the deck. I just used some long lag screws that were used previously for attaching these posts. Once these posts were good and attached, then I just worked on getting the rest of the railing screwed into the deck. And with my opening in this side of the deck now complete, I could get to work on figuring out how to add the stairs off of this side of the deck. All right guys, so when it comes to adding some steps off of a deck like this, one of the first things that you need to figure out is what the height is between your landing spot and the top of your deck. Now. How I figured that out is I just took a level and I placed it on the top of my deck here, making sure it was flat and level, and I extended it out so that it's over top of my cement pad. Once I have it where I want it, then I take my tape measure, and I'm gonna take a measurement from the top of my cement pad to the bottom of this level. And that gives me a measurement of 26 and 3 quarter inches. Now that's an important measurement that you wanna remember. So that's gonna help you figure out what your rise and your run for your stair stringers are. 
Now here's a stair stringer that's already cut out and as you can see this vertical section here is my rise and this horizontal section here is my run. Now the run is what your stair treads will sit on and so you want to use this height to sort of figure out what measurement these need to be for a very comfortable rise and run. Now you also want to do some research beforehand, take a look at your local building codes, see what the standard is. Um, you know, you don't want a rise that's too tall uh, because that can make for a very uh, dangerous step, uh, trip hazard, and you don't want a run that's too long either. So just, like I said, just do some research beforehand. And then the easiest thing to do after you know sort of what you're looking for in a rise and run, then you want to head online and find a stair calculator. Now, I'm not going to sit here and try to explain to you exactly how to calculate your rise and run. Um, honestly, I feel like you could just Google it and get a better, uh, more thorough explanation of how to figure that out. But honestly, what I've done and what I think is just a little bit easier, especially for someone doing this for the first time, is to just take that uh, measurement, that overall height here, that overall rise, and then, like I said, head on to Google and type in stair calculator. And there's a lot of stair calculators out there. I think there's one on mycarpentry.com. I think dex.com has one. Uh, just head to one of those uh, websites and find a stair calculator. And then you can input this measurement that we took here. You can also input, you know, if you have a particular uh, rise that you need or particular run based on building codes or just what you want, uh, depending on how many stair treads you want, uh, you can input all that stuff and once you input that information it'll tell you exactly uh, what rise and run that you need and then from there you have sort of one or two options you can go and just grab a 2 by 12 and take those measurements and just cut out your own stair stringers what I've done here is I just went and bought some that were already pre-cut from Lowe's because they match uh, the dimensions that I needed so that's an option too that can save you a little bit of time uh, but anyways Head online, find a stair calculator. It'll save you a lot of time and it'll save you the headache of having to figure it out on, on your own. And then once you have all that and your stair stringers in place, then you can move on to the process of getting them attached to the deck. All right guys, so now it's time for me to start thinking about how I'm gonna attach my stair stringers to the deck itself. Now, originally my plan was to use these four step stringers here because that would allow me to just tie my brackets into this piece of the deck here. And if I use these four step stringers, then my top step is just going to be flush with the top of the deck. However, I am trying to match some stairs on the opposite side of this deck and they do have some posts with some handrails that come down. And I think that having the top step flush here is just gonna interfere with that. And it's not gonna exactly match the other side. So for the sake of just keeping them the same, I think what I'm gonna be forced to do is make this a three step stringer. I'll just cut my stringers here, uh, turn them into a three step stringer. However, by doing that, I'm gonna have to come in here and add some supports underneath this um, since it's just open here. I was hoping to be able to avoid doing that, but I think I'm gonna have no choice here. Um, so my next step is I'll just get to work on adding some uh, supports underneath the deck here where my bracket pieces can attach for attaching my stair stringers. So now I get to crawl under this uh, disgusting deck. Can't wait. His ball rolled all the way under this deck and I don't feel like army crawling. All as soon as I said army crawl, he took off and showed me how it was done. Which honestly, I was a little relieved because this is one job I didn't want to tackle myself. You got it! <laughs> Alright, come back! Come back! Come back! Come back! Come back! guys so I think I have a plan in place for how I'm gonna add some support to this deck to attach my stair stringers so what I did was I took a 4x4 four four and I cut it into four different sections I'm gonna have four stair stringers attached to this deck so everywhere that I have a stair stringer what I plan on doing is taking this 4x4 four four and attaching it back behind here I might have to have to add some blocking as well and then I'm gonna take these six inch timber screws and drive it through uh, these boards here into my 4x4 four four, and hopefully that'll hold uh, the 4x4 four four in place 
I'll bring you, uh, I'll bring the camera under the deck so you can kind of see what we're working with here. And that'll also give me a spot that I can attach my bracket pieces into. So I've been putting it off, but I guess I now have to crawl under this deck. Let's get going. All right, guys, I'm going in. Wish me luck. All right, so I'm not sure how good this is going to show up on camera because to be honest, it's really dark down here. But basically what I'm doing is I'm taking this 4x4 and I'm putting it behind these boards here. Now if you can kind of see, there's actually two boards here. So what I'm doing is I'm placing this 4x4 behind it and then I might also add in some blocking just to strengthen this up some. And then I'm going to take those 6 inch uh, timber screws and drive those screws through these two boards into this 4x4. And then I'll take a two by six and then I'll put two of those together and then attach it to this four by four here. And that will hopefully give me the support I need to attach my brackets for my stair stringers. But anyways, that's the plan. Now I just need to get these four by fours in place, get those attached. Uh, and then hopefully uh, this I can get out of this uh, deck underneath this deck because it's not exactly uh, a very homey uh, space. Actually, even over here I thought that was a snake at first. Turns out it was uh, Murphy's toy. <laughs> so anyways, I'm gonna get this knocked out and then get to work on attaching my stringers. Once my 4x4s were attached to the deck, then I took those 2x6 boards and worked on attaching those to my 4x4 supports. Alright, so I've got my supports in place here and I feel good about being able to attach my bracket pieces now for my stair stringers. I am going to go and get some more of these 6 inch timber screws for attaching these pieces into the 4x4s. Uh, right now I've just got some screws in there to kind of hold it in place until I can get those. But uh, I think this support's going to work out and the next step is just to work on getting my brackets installed. Alright, so I thought I was going to get my bracket pieces attached yesterday, but then I realized that I had gotten the wrong size screws uh, and I did not feel like going back to Lowe's yesterday, so I just decided to stop working for the day and come back to this project today. Now, the brackets that I'm going to be using for attaching these stair stringers are these Simpson Strong Tie uh, stair stringer brackets here. Um, they actually will bend to the slope of the stair stringer. So what I'm going to do is I've already got this piece on here that I'm just kind of using as a guide of the height that I want to have all these uh, stair stringers uh, brackets attached. And then I'll basically just go ahead and get these brackets attached to my deck everywhere that I want a stair stringer. And then once these are attached, then I can work on getting the stringers themselves attached to these brackets. Alrighty, let's get going. All 
right, so what I've done is I've measured six and a half inches down from the top of this board here. And I've done that because I wanted to match the rise on my stair stringers so that I can have an even rise on each step. So by marking down six and a half inches, I can place my bracket uh, where that six and a half inch mark is. And that means that the top of my uh, stair stringers should sit six and a half inches below uh, below the top of the board here. So that's going to give me an even rise for all of my steps. Okay, so for these stair stringers that are going to be in the outside, I just want to make sure that I make note of where these side bracket pieces are because I want to place it so that when you look at this from the outside, you don't see any hardware. So I just make sure for my outside pieces that I have these bracket pieces facing toward the inside. Now I ended up attaching these brackets with some number nine inch and a half SD connector screws. These were in the same aisle as the brackets and I felt like they would be a little quicker than using nails. Okay, so what I'm working on now is I need to notch out a section on the bottom of my stair stringers. So I just took a two by six and I made a mark at the bottom of the stair stringers. And that's for a two by six that's gonna run the entire width of all of my combined stair stringers uh, that'll actually sit on the concrete pad and that will allow me to be able to uh, screw into the concrete pad. Now, I did do a little bit of research before to try to figure out what was the best way to anchor these stairs to the concrete pad. And this is just a way that I've seen a lot of other people do it, but with that same token, I've seen a lot of people say, this is not how you're supposed to do it. So, you know what, I don't know. This is how I'm going to do it. I figure, uh, let me give this a try. It seems like the easiest way to be able to anchor these steps to the concrete uh, to also tie all of the stair stringers together. So I'm going to give that a shot and hopefully it's going to work out just fine. <laughs> guys I feel like this is one of those projects where every time I feel like I'm making some steps forward I take a look at it and realize that I need to change something and so I did a little bit of work on this yesterday um, but now I've decided that I think I need to go in and add one more stair stringer in here because I have these spaced about 16 inches apart right now uh, however, with the type of deck boards that I'm going to be using, I think I want to decrease that spacing a little bit um, and do about 12 inches apart. So I had to run to Lowe's this morning and pick up another stair stringer uh, and another bracket. I feel like I've been to Lowe's so many times in the last couple of days. I mean, what is a home improvement project if you don't go to Mo uh, Lowe's several times a day? Um, anyways, now that I've got, I think, what I need, I'm hopefully going to uh, attach these brackets to their final place. I really don't want to attach these things again, so hopefully this will be the last time that I have to get these brackets attached. So I just got to take all this apart now and shift some stuff around. Let me get to it. Ironically, a little later on, I decided to replace the treads on the steps on the opposite side of the deck and noticed that they had only used three stringers total that were spaced 25 inches apart. So I'm not exactly sure if I needed as many stringers as I used here, but I would much rather overbuild these things than underbuild them, so I still think it was worth adding an extra. All right, here's a little piece of advice for you so that you don't make the same mistakes that I just made. I already added all of my screws into this one here and I realized it's a little bit lower than I need. So uh, when you're first attaching your stringers, I would recommend just putting like one or two screws in first until you get all your stringers set. And then once you're good uh, and level and you've got everything adjusted like you need it, then you can go back in and add the rest of your screws. Hope that helps.
is a good feeling. We are good and level. So now I can go ahead and get to work on attaching the rest of my screws. After getting my stringers fully screwed into the deck, then I used some of these angled brackets to get the bottom of the stringers attached to the 2x6 board that I would anchor to the concrete pad. I just attached these with the same SD screws that I used for the stringer brackets. Then it was time to anchor the steps to the concrete pad. To do this, Phil offered to step in and give me a break after a long work day by drilling into the pad with a hammer drill and then attach the board using some tap con screws. Alright guys, so I finally got all of my steer stringers attached and now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some of this joist tape all along my stringers here. Uh, and this is just going to hopefully extend the life of these stairs uh, just by weatherproofing them a little bit more. Now I've spent a lot of time installing these stairs so if I can get some more life out of these things I'll try anything. So I'm just going to go along and add some of this tape. Hopefully that will help seal it up from the weather a little bit more. The next day I got to work on installing my stair treads. The first thing I had to do was get them cut to size. My plan was to use some 5 foot long treads so I picked up some 10 foot long 5 quarter deck boards and started ripping them to size. Each step would need two boards to get me the run that I would need. Once I laid the boards out for my first step, then I marked where the boards met up with my stringers and then I pre-drilled some holes with a self-centering drill bit and attached them to the stringers with two and a half inch screws. To keep even spacing between my boards, I just stacked some popsicle sticks together to get the gap I needed. And then I use that to keep my boards evenly spaced and allow for expansion and contraction. I just repeated these same steps for getting all of my treads attached to the stringers. For the first time we finally had some functional stairs off of this side of the deck that we could test out and make sure they were comfortable. Once we confirmed that they worked well then I got to work on adding the rest of the boards. Now since I didn't want to leave the rises open I took some boards and added them to cover up my openings. Now this is kind of a personal preference you can always skip this step if you choose. thing I have to do is add some handrails to these steps. Let's get going. To get these handrails installed I called in my dad for some help again because I had a feeling this would be a job where an extra set of hands would be much needed. To get started we figured out where our bottom 6x6 post for the handrail needed to sit to be even with the top post and then we marked both the post and the step for where we would need to notch both. Then I just took my multi-tool and used it to notch out the section on my bottom stair tread that I had marked. Now if you don't already own one of these little multi-tools then I would recommend getting one because they can really come in handy for a lot of different things. Once I knew the post would fit in the notch on the stair tread then I started working on notching the 6x6 post itself. 
I just made some marks and transfer those marks to each side of my post, then use the combination of my circular saw, reciprocating saw, and chisels to get this big post fully notched. Once the post was notched, we set it in place with most of the posts now resting on the bottom stair tread. Then we put a post level on it to make sure it was level as I sank some screws in from the front and the sides of the post. Next up, we had to figure out where we would need to cut our 6x6. To do this, we attached a level from the top and then did some measuring to figure out where it needed to sit on the post. Once we had it locked down, then we drew a line on the post that would give us the angle that we needed to cut. And if you're anything like me and don't get it exactly perfect on the first try, then another great use for that multi-tool is using it to get everything completely flush. Now that we had our post cut to the proper angle, we could get to work on adding the rest of the components of our handrail. Each piece would need to be cut at an angle, so we would first cut a template piece since we knew that we would have to be repeating many of the same cuts. I also tried to salvage some pieces from the section of railing that I had demoed earlier and we worked on attaching our railing piece by piece until we had it fully together. Look at that. Look at all those balls. What do you have to say for yourself? <laughs> Gosh. I think my dog has a problem. <laughs> Just look at all of those balls surrounding the works. <laughs> I think someone was trying to tell me he wanted to play, so I took a break for a quick tug sesh before wrapping up these handrails. Once we had one handrail complete, we repeated the exact same steps for the other one. And with that, these deck stairs were D-O-N-E. And that is a wrap on these deck stairs. I still have a few little things to button up, but I won't bore you with that. We now have stairs on both sides of our deck, and I have a feeling that we're gonna use these a lot. So I'm glad that I took the time to add them. Now, as you can see, these new steps don't exactly match the color of the existing deck, and that's because I used pressure treated lumber, which is treated, and that basically means that it's still very wet at the moment. So I'm gonna let it dry for a few months and then I'll stain this wood to match the rest of the deck. Okay, so let's talk about some of the details of this build. Now I'd say that adding these stairs cost me somewhere around $500 for all of the materials, which I feel like is wild to say, but lumber isn't exactly a cheap resource. Even if it's not as crazy as it was three years ago, it still adds up. Now, around $200 of that $500 estimate was the cost of materials for pouring the cement pad for these stairs to land on, and the rest is for things like lumber, brackets, screws, etc. Now, I'd say this project took me about five to seven days. Now, I wasn't working on it all day for those five to seven days, so if I had to guess, I'd say you could knock out a project like this in maybe like two to four full work days if you really wanted to. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, please consider giving it a like for me to help my channel continue to grow. One of my goals is to try and reach 1,000 subscribers by the end of this year. If you'd like to help me get there and you enjoy watching my videos, then I'd love to have you guys subscribe so you can follow along for all of my future projects. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you all again soon for my next build. Bye.